when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. Are you sure? Hello. Hello, darling. You're currently wearing a little bit of my pants. Mm. Uh, it is a makeup uh, channel after all. It is a makeup channel after all. This is a makeup channel after all. Hopefully you're watching me in black and white, but I'm still Angie, he's still the hubby Chris. Mm. This is still 4F Beauty, in mm -hmm. case you were wondering. He's on leave this week, because it's mm. our anniversary week. Mm. He's about to go and make me lunch, so I need to do this intro as quick as possible, because my mm. stomach think my throat's been cut. Mm. Well, see you soon. Yeah. Go away, you so <laughs> Bitch, I ain't joking. <laughs> a bit of an Alexis and Coco yeah. moment there for you. Not Alexis, Alyssa and Coco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do I call Alyssa Alexa? Anyway, I no idea. clearly I'm hungry because my brain's confusing two drag queens. Right. Oh, I see where this is going. What? You will have seen from the uh, title, the thumbnail, and if you've read any of it, the description that this is the latest instalment of my photo, inspiration, challenge, collaboration, or pick, for short. And I am delighted once again to be collaborating with my naughty little minx from across the Atlantic. It's Anne. She still hasn't got bail money, so you still need to behave yourself. So, if you want to find out, because hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now, if you want to find out exactly what the picture is that inspired us, which palette or palettes I'm going to use to create this look, and most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Sammy's here to tell you, it's that time. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, and enjoy. And it comes. the TVs. <laughs> Can you see why I married him? <laughs> Always gets me laughing. Love ya. Right, here comes the film. Hey, my lovelies. Right, okay, welcome back from the intro, which clearly I've not filmed yet. You will have seen from the intro that this is the next pick episode. And it is the next episode with the lovely Anne. So, Anne actually sent me a picture for a change. Because normally I send the girls photos or boys photos and they choose which one they like. This time, Anne sent me this photo of this particular insect. And was like, bitch, we need to do this one. And I'm like, bitch, you're so right. So, this insect beautiful shades of pink varying shades of the green leaf obviously the black background but I wanted to make sure I was choosing the right tone for kind of the the head of the insect um, if you look at its dainty little foot just resting on the leaf at the bottom there it goes a very deep color I wanted to make sure whether that was brown toned or pink toned, at least on my screen anyway. Um, and also the body of the insect, I wanted to make sure I got the right tone for that so I could establish how I wanted to pull my look together. So I used my Pantone picker app that I've got, which gave me this particular set of colours. So you can see lots of different shades of pink. The foot is like a pinky brown, but a burgundy brown, so brilliant. And then the different shades of green, including one which is 
almost like a silvery green or a silvery grey almost um, which I would imagine is the head and the body of said beautiful insect so it has been a while since I played with this particular palette she's got some lovely pinks she's got a lovely green uh, so I thought I'd pull her back out for a bit of a play. I mean I've played with her off camera but I haven't done a lot with her on camera because I've had so many different things to film with. So this remains a teaching channel which means I'll talk more about Anne at the other end of the film in the outro. I like to try and keep the middle section just for the tutorial element. I go at a speed that even beginners can keep up with, that's mainly due to my chronic pain to be quite frank. Um, so if you are at a faster speed than me, there's a speed widget, feel free to use it, really isn't going to worry me. Won't even know unless you tell me. Um, I also have just my eyes on screen so that even if you have quite bad eyesight and you're watching me on a phone screen you can still see what's going on you can still see how I'm holding the brush how I'm blending it out etc it does mean when I'm looking down to add more pigment or um, clean a brush you do get a lovely shot of my widow's peak I think that's a fair trade-off being able to see what's going on. It also makes it easier for me if I'm having a pain moment to cut that element out without making it quite so obvious that there's cuts going on. I do all of the eye look on screen so you can see exactly what's going on. There are two rules with the pick series. One you may only use colours that are in the picture. Two, you don't have to use all of them if you don't want to. So, that being said, I'm going to insert a clip just now where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set lids because although shadow wears on them in a very similar manner, to get the best initial look and the longest wear time from your eye makeup you need to apply them slightly differently depending on which type of eye you have so once that clip is done and it will just be my eyes on screen I'll be back to apply some coloured pigments to my eyelids see you at the other end of this clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer 
across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to go in with my Spectrum B06 brush, a big fluffy brush. And I'm going to dip into Zona first, which is a, a peachy pink. There's quite a bit of kick up with uh, the mattes in here. Just tap off and then pick up the excess when you need to either add more pigment to the brush or if you're doing the other eye. As always, I'm holding the brush right at the very end. And if the handle is long enough, just brace the end of it in the palm of your hand there just to help stabilize this end and then we're going to do the Viennese Waltz blend natural turns towards the nose flicker when we get there reverse turns to come back out again the reason I do that instead of just relying on the windscreen wiper I am quite literally two weeks away from being 47 I've also lost over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers that have the same problem. By relying on windscreen wiper, you have the issue that your lid can fold while you're applying the makeup, and that gives you those telltale white stripes or barcoding. Viennese Waltz gently manipulates your skin in one direction and then the other. And helps eliminate that problem. So I'm going to start at the outside edge, half rooting my natural crease and my brow, and start blending. Hope he's actually at home this week because it's our wedding anniversary this week. Seven years married, nine years together because we got married on the two year anniversary of our first date. 
Okay, in the screen, this is looking a lot peachier than I remember it being. Uh, oh well, I'm going to be going over it with a brighter pink anyway, so it's not too much of an issue. Yeah, seven years married, nine years together, and he hasn't killed me yet. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can be really bloody annoying to live with at times. Bless him. He's very, very good though with my, when I'm having a pain day. Never makes me feel bad about not being able to do any housework or anything. Bless him. I've got a good one there, folks. Anyone tries to take him off me, I will rip you limb from limb. Not that I think he'd go. I think he's more likely to have an affair with a shed than he would be another woman. Okay, the reason I do, the reason I do both eyes like this rather than do one eye and then go back in and do the other, there's times when due to fibro or hay fever, one eye can be slightly puffier than normal, which means it can affect um, where you need to place the shadow. Um, and it can totally change how the shape looks once it's done. Now if I'd done all of this eye and blended all the colours together, when I then come to do this eye, if I did need to make adjustments, it wouldn't necessarily be easy to work out where those adjustments would need to be, which colours needed adjusting, in order to look the same both sides. Right. So I've just cleaned this off on a clean washcloth and I'm going into blend and snap which is a beautiful pink and I'm going to pop this just a little bit further down and blend that all the way across there I have to say I really like the, because this is the, the palette that Nikki Tutorials did in collaboration with Beauty Bay. The last few Beauty Bay palettes that I've tried, um, I've got this one, I've got um, Book of Magic, I think is the other one of theirs that I've got. I was really, really impressed with the quality of the shadows and how well they blend because I mean well you've seen how easily that blended that that blended like a high-end powder in fact I've used high-end palettes that haven't blended that well so it's uh, I just wish they'd do some smaller palettes I mean this is, what, this is a 20 pan palette, but because the pans are so large, it's a very very large palette overall, I wish they'd either do smaller pans, although they do smaller pans in their By Beauty Bay range, but that to me looks like a different format of um, the mattes don't look the same to me, they don't look like they're going to be... I mean, you, you've seen how easily that's just blended out, that was just crazy. I barely had time to finish my sentence and it's blended, which is amazing. So, you know, these would be great for one and done shadows, for going to work, for example. Because there are some... Um, neutrals in here that you could use. 
So I'm gonna. I'm initially gonna try my very, 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 very thin blender brush. This one. It's clean. It's just stained. And I'm gonna go into slasher. If this is not quite dense enough for what I need, I'll change to this one, which is slightly more dense bristles. And I'll start off with this. Now, if you are moving your crease, this is the point that you put this colour where you're moving your crease to. It's the darkest colour I'm going to be using on my eyes today. And whatever is dark recedes, whatever is light comes forward. So it helps give the illusion that this particular part of the eye falls back further. So if you are moving your crease, it will help cement the illusion. Yes, there's fallout. No, I don't care. Because I do my face afterwards anyway. Let's pop a little bit of that on the outer third of the mobile lid. I think I need a slightly firmer brush than this. That feels better. Yeah, I I was just I was really shocked first time I tried this. Um, and indeed, I think I can't guarantee it. But I think the Made by Mitchell range may possibly be being done through Beauty Bay or at least using the same suppliers because the palettes of his that I've tried, the newer ones, you know, Feet on the Ground, Head in the Clouds, blend in a very similar manner to this. So I think that could indeed be the case. So I'm just flicking the edge up here to give myself a fake wing. If I can I'm gonna pop a wing on today but hay fever is real folks. I struggle here and here a lot of the times to get pigment to blend well because I have very very dry patches just there. But if I use a micellar wipe and just tidy up this edge, You can see there that's actually blended really nicely. A lot of people ask why I use a wipe with my cellar water on rather than putting tape down. What I do is it's very simple. If the tape is sticky enough to stop powder from getting under the edge of it, then it's sticky enough pull your skin when you're taking it off, um, which I'm not prepared to risk. This side here you can see I've got super deep creasing just right on the inside here to the point that I actually have to stretch and break my own rule about pulling your lid out um, because otherwise what happens is the pigment settles loosely in those deep creases and throughout the day it ends up falling into my eye and down my cheek which is both painful and unsightly but you can see even this deeper colour is blending so easily um, it really is great Especially if, like me, when, when your fibre is really bad, your skin can be so sensitive 
I mean, I've got a set of brushes that I keep and use on days when my eyes are particularly sore because they're the softest brushes that I have and that's my these ones my Royal and Lanicle Chic Pro because they're the softest brushes that I have so if I'm having a really bad pain day that's the brushes that I'll use because I know it'll irritate my skin the least and I'll also try and use a palette that I know that is, is like this and will actually blend easily. Because it, it does make all the difference, it really, really does. Now, doing this sort of fake wing or powder wing if, um, like me, you struggle with hay fever or, um, you know, fibro gives me very runny eyes. This is a great trick for having a wing without having to actually add a wing. It'll still give you the illusion of lifting the eye up at the corner, giving you a slightly more youthful, more awake look. But it doesn't then present the issue of having to put a liquid liner on and whisking your eyes running and ruining the whole look. It's also great if you're learning how to put liner on, because if if you do this first, you've then got a line to follow to draw your wing on with, so you know your angles are going to be the same both sides. Right. Now, I normally wet the pigments when I'm putting a shimmer on, but if I remember rightly, the shimmers in this particular palette are more like super shock shimmers. So they actually apply better dry. So I'm going in with an A16 flat brush. Again, it's clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to start off by going into All In. Which is a, a champagne with a pink flip. Because this will pick up on... The lighter colour of the body of the insect. And I'm going to pop that right in the inner corner. Just drag that out very, not very far at all. I literally just want to highlight the very, very inner corner with it. Now, like I said, with my other eye, I do have to break my own rule about not pulling it out. But I will show you how I do it in such a way that I cause as little additional damage as possible. Alright, so I only stretch the lid far enough to straighten out the creasing. I then very quickly apply the shimmer, making sure it's really well adhered to the lid, and then gently replace it back. Don't just let it ping back, place it back. And you can see there's a lot more movement on this lid than there was on this one. I clean the brush off and now I'm going to go into pride. You can of course use your fingers to apply these if you want. I just 
I've got stubby little fingers, so I'm just going to pop this. on the middle and blend it out and then just really gently blend it in with that first shade that we used so there's no obvious delineation but you can see that just gives just a fraction of additional light right in that inner corner. So, same thing this side. If you find um, putting a shadow on like this is particularly difficult with a brush brush. You can always try a silicon tipped brush or you know those sponge tip applicators we always chuck away. They actually work quite well with glitter or with this sort of texture of shadow. And again just blend it in There. How pretty is that? Right, my beautiful ones, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to pop off of camera and I'm going to put some base makeup on. And I will be back to finish this look off. Now, I'm going to have a bit of time now before I get to chat to you again. But for you, my darlings, it will be absolutely instant. So I'll see you, well, right now, really. Hey my lovelies, okay I'm back but my brows are not done yet because I've been asked to show how I do my brows. So, ask and thou shalt receive. I have got a disposable spoolie which is Admittedly looking a bit rank at the moment, but I just, I use them until they get too gunky, chuck them away and then get a new one. This is my pink honey honey glue in a strawberry sherbet. Basically soap with a hole in the middle. I then use a setting spray and just slightly dampen the spoolie run it around the inside of the soap so and then I start off by brushing them up but twirling the spoolie to get as much soap onto them as I can. Then come back on to them again and lift and then just pull at the top to add the shape. See? Admittedly I am yet to try this on a day where it is particularly hot. Just go and get a little bit more soap on the thingy. Um, I have heard tell that if you sweat a lot it can release the beast. Um, but, as I said, I have to wait and see. If that is the case, I'll find a gel that can do the same thing. So again, brush it up, 
and then flick at the top whilst twirling the brush. It's a bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy, you know. And that gives you the overall shape. You can, of course, get tinted soaps. I prefer to use a clear one because I then go in I'm just going to stand my spoolie up to dry I then go in with an angle brush you can use a flat top brush if you want and I'm going to go into Slasher which is the deepest burgundy that I used here and then just Very gently start filling the brows in. And you can see it doesn't take a lot of colour to do this, but of course you can do them as as bold or as subtle as you like. I mean, you can use um, a brow pencil. I just like tying my brows in to the makeup look, and then obviously, if you get a bit of a bare patch like I've got there, powder just covers it. When you sit back and you look at it and you think, okay, that bit there could do with a little bit more colour. Like so. I, I'm the kind of person, I like to feel my brows are firmly in place and staying put. Because your brows actually serve a purpose. They're there so that when you start sweating your sweat from your head doesn't run down into your eyes. Because obviously salt water in the eyes is gonna sting like a mofo and affect your vision which if you're driving at the time, not good. So, for those who wanted to see it, that is how I do my brows. And now my eye is deciding to water on me. Marvellous. They do this. This is why there's no liner again today, folks. Right. I'm going in with a stubby little brush. This is the Spectrum A13. Is butter a carb? And I'm going to go into EW in the palette, which is beautiful green. Because obviously, I want to pull that green in from the leaf. So I'm going to run this along the bottom lash line and really smudge it out. That's hubby just coming out of the bathroom. Hello. Thankfully he is dressed. 
It's alright, I'm zoomed in to just my eyes, they can't see. Oh, ah, okay. Oh, I shan't wave anything around. No, please don't. <laughs> you demonetise before I'm even monetised. I'm nearly done, darling. That's a lunch when you. Ooh, see, he looks after me. I do. Seven years married this Friday. Nine years together. We're both still alive. It's a good start. <laughs> right. Oh, I do like that. That looks really pretty. Right. Now this is just a really cheap lip brush that I've had for donkeys years. And I'm going to nip into Ivy in the palette. And just pop a little flash of that just up under the tail of my brow there. Because apparently folks, as well as boobs and bums and everything else, our brows are affected by gravity as well. So it just helps to give them a zhuzh zhuzh. If you know what a zhuzh zhuzh is. And now I think... Hmm... I want to do something different on the inner corner. Let me try rose gold. Hmm, that's pretty. Yes, I like that. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you one last time. I am going to pop off of camera. I'm going to chuck some mascara on, some lippy, some highlight on my face. Do something with the hair, which is having a horny moment just here. Look, look at this little horn, look at this little babble horn. Um, <laughs> and I'll be back to uh, finish off this look and tell you a little bit more about Anne. Devilish. Indeed. <laughs> hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay. The highlight is Max uh, Let It Glow Extra Dimension from Christmas. The lippy, clearly I felt like being a Mac girl today is peace love unity and respect and it's one of those dingly ones and i like it because it sort of has like a like a shift to it i don't know if it was showing up very well on camera but here we go here's my finished look based on this picture that the beautiful Anne sent what do you think you like you not like how well do you think I've done? Is this what you were expecting from me or were you expecting me to go down the green roots with just like a little pop of pink maybe? Let me know. I'd really be interested to hear how you think I would have done this prior to actually watching me do it and also which colours are you drawn to most? Would you have played up the black and done like a really black smoky eye with just a, a bright vibrant pink lip or something. How would you have done it? Tell me. I really, really love to know how people are inspired by similar pictures. 
Talking about people being inspired by similar pictures, of course I am collabing today with Anne. She actually sent the photo over this time. Um, I absolutely adore her. I've, I've collabed with her a number of times now and um, she's... I still refuse to believe the woman is in her 60s. Flat out refuse. Um, and she's, she's just... She's just such a lovely, genuine person, you know? We always say it's just as well the Atlantic is between us because if we were in the same continent, nevertheless the same town, we would probably end up going out and getting arrested. Sexually harassing young men, maybe. Or young women, who knows? Depends how the fancy takes us. Anyway. Anne does a lot of um, colourful looks, but she also does things where rather than buying a high-end palette, she'll say, right, okay, I'm seeing the colours that are in your high-end palette, and I'm going to see what I've got in my collection that I can do a similar look. Because let's face it, you've seen me use the Nikki Tutorials palette to do this. But if I'd said to you I had used Sydney Grace shadows or Luxie or um, Mario or Revolution, could you tell without seeing me apply them? Could you actually be sure which brand of eyeshadow I'm wearing? Um, she's also writing a book and I've had the absolute honour of... Um, oh, sorry, hay fever. I've had the absolute honour of reading a few of the chapters and literally first chapter in, I messaged her going, Bitch, I'm going to do the uh, the spoken word version of this, you know that right? I'm doing the audiobook. So um, yeah, she's in the middle of setting up her website at the moment. And I think she said what we were going to do initially was maybe do like a Patreon or something similar to that where you pay for access to part of a website that then allows you to play the spoken word version of the book. Uh, but she hasn't quite finished the book yet, so and I'm I'm kind of bitch enough of building your website. I need more chapters to read. Come on, come on now. I, I want I want to read some more because it's it's got me hooked, and I want to find out what's going to happen with the characters. So that's a good sign because I've always been an avid reader, but since Fibro, books have to grab me like that. Otherwise, my attention span is just like, hmm, who's, who's this character again? What do they do? But her book just grabbed me right from the start, and I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying this one. So, uh, hurry up and finish the book so I can read it for you. Anyway, um, if you're a 4F beauty long term, or short term member, uh, do double check you're still subscribed, YouTube are unsubscribing you but they're leaving my films in your feed, it's not obvious that you've been deleted it's also worth double checking your notification status because mine keep getting knocked back to personalise which means I get absolutely nothing in the way of notifications um, and that's not just for me, that's for all channels that you follow, it's worth double checking that. Once you've done that, given me a cheeky like, or if you're one of my phantom dislikers, grow a pair of cojones and tell me why you pressed dislike. Because if you don't have the balls to tell me why you pressed dislike, don't you be clicking that button. Don't you be clicking and running away. Tell me why. Hmm? Sorry, I got a bit ballsy then. Shame my dislikers aren't quite so ballsy. <laughs> anyway, 
<clears throat> once you've done that and let me know which colours you're attracted to and which palette or singles you would be drawn to to uh, complete your look using that picture I'm going to need you to go across to the lovely Anne and check out her look now so far in over 50 episodes of my pick series there's only been two occasions when the look has been similar and that was when there were very few colours to choose from. Now technically there's very few colours to choose from in this picture. Pink, green, black, a little bit of silvery grey maybe. So, will our looks be similar? Will we actually end up doing the same look? There is only one way for you to find out and that is to go across and watch Anne's film and see. If, however, you are here from Anne's channel or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, this is uh, it's pretty much a good example of what you're going to get from my channel. Uh, basically I witter on about everything and nothing in particular. Sometimes I talk about important things, most times I don't, but I'm told that my voice is very soothing. So the wittering is bearable. So if that sounds like the kind of thing you'd like to see a bit more of, super easy to join the 4F family. And we are the nicest family on the internet. You literally hit that subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope YouTube will pull their finger out and actually bloody send you some. In the meantime, as well as this rather ample backside upon which I am perched and is currently going a wee bit numb, I have an ample back catalogue of films you can watch. Do you see what I did there? Did you find it funny? Seriously though, um, I've said it for what feels like forever now, <coughs> ad infinitum etc etc, but if you're looking for a bit of me time, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy and just indulge baby, just give yourself a little bit of me time, chill out with a coffee and a custard cream or whatever your choice of beverage and ambrosia may happen to be. So, with that in mind, all that remains for me to say, as ever, my darlings, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Ooh, at the end of this, just before my outro, if I manage to do it right, there'll be a little screen with a subscribe button and a couple of other films you could watch. Of course, I've only done this once before, so to quote RuPaul, I may fuck it up. <laughs> I don't wait to find out that. Keep watching and see whether you actually get it coming up before a musical outro. Oh, I hope I can do it right now. <laughs>